Hello everybody, friends and family from around the world. I'm Natalie. And I'm Joseph. And we got invited by President Lund and President Corden to make this cool video. Today, we're gonna to be hiking Enzyme Peak, just north of the Salt Lake City Temple. This is Teji, and this is Ammon. Hi. Hey guys. And this is Hannah and Emily. Hi. This is Joey, and that's Bryce. Oh, hi. Hey. You ready to get going, Joseph? Yeah, let's do this. Welcome everyone here in the conference center and across the world. I'm Elder Garrett W. Gong of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, joined by Young Women General President Bonnie H. Corden and Young Men General President Stephen J. Lund, and our eight intrepid hiking adventure friends. Let's begin by joining our chorus in singing The Spirit of God followed by an invocation by Condi. Dear Father in heaven, we are so very thankful to be gathered together tonight. We are so grateful for the opportunity to hear from Elder Gong, Sister Corden, and President Lund. We, we ask that the messages that they have prepared for us tonight will be able to be received into our hearts and into our minds. Heavenly Father, as youth with the struggles of today, we are so thankful and grateful for the leadership and love thou has given us. We ask that we might be able to continue to grow our knowledge and our faith in the gospel. 
We are so thankful for everything we have. We are thankful for our Savior and his eternal atoning sacrifice. And we pray that we might always remember to never be alone and that he's always with us and that we can truly do all things through Christ. We say these things in the sacred name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Condi. It's a new year with new hopes, new ways to connect and belong, new opportunities to grow spiritually. Our youth theme comes from the New Testament, Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Jesus Christ is the strength of youth. Today we're talking about joy and strength in Jesus Christ, including when we face challenges, feel alone or unsure, or are looking to know our path ahead. Shall we say the theme together? Let's say it together, everyone, wherever we are in this room, around the world. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Wonderful, thank you. It's inspiring to hear those words out loud. I feel truth and strength in knowing I can do all things in Christ. The next time you feel maybe a little lost or maybe a little afraid, say the theme again. Say it in your mind. Say it out loud. The Spirit will testify to you that you can do all things through strength in Jesus Christ. President Lunn, President Corden, what symbol goes with this year's theme, and how can it help us focus on our Savior? Thanks, Elder Gong. We have chosen a trail marker, like this one back here, as our symbol for the year. You'll sometimes find markers like these in a variety of places with a variety of names. In English, we often call this a cairn. Those of you who speak Dutch call them Steinhopen. In Italy, they're called tumulo. President Corden just returned from Mongolia where these trail markers are called Abu. I didn't speak Hmong, but she does. <laughs> Abu. They're, they're usually a, a mound of rough stones that have been stacked as wayfinders, built by those who have previously found a safe way and that provide guidance and assurance to others that follow. Have you ever felt a little lost or unsure when you're heading down a, an unfamiliar trail or even while wandering a crowded city sidewalk and then you see a sign that lets you know you're going in the right direction. It instantly brings a confidence that rushes into your heart. We each are beloved daughters and sons of God on our journey through mortality. Sometimes we might feel a little lost or unsure, but our Savior has provided signs, spiritual markers all around us. Spiritual trail markers can give us a reassurance that I can do all things, through Christ, which strengtheneth me. So as you ponder this, no matter how steep the climb or really hard the journey, we are not alone. We can draw strength from the Savior. So let's think about this tonight. Let's ponder, what does this look like in our own lives? The Lord has given us powerful markers that we sometimes walk right past without receiving the direction that they offer. Some of those things might include our patriarchal blessings and general conference talks given in places like this, like seminary and FSY conferences, and for that matter, the scriptures and the commandments that provide safety and peace. They can confirm our progress or they can draw our attention to things meant to bring us joy. Sometimes they warn us of danger ahead. Our task is to just move our feet one step at a time, to take each step forward and then the next. And the Holy Ghost will help guide us 
to stay on or to return to the path. The Holy Ghost knows who we are, why we're here, and in whom we can trust. The Lord provides spiritual signposts. They help us know someone who loves us is ahead of us on the path, preparing the way. Our youth theme video, I Can Do All Things in Christ, shows finding strength in Christ. We'll watch that first. And then we'll watch a video of our hiking adventure with our hiking friends here and talk about what we learned and felt. a lot different from up here. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Yeah. The view changed. And our, and our perspective changed too. How does this kind of remind you of some of the things that we have in our life? Challenges, thoughts, perspectives, belonging. So I used to struggle a lot with loneliness 
and it's very, very isolating. You feel like you're just, it's just you. You're the only one feeling alone. Um, and, and the biggest way I found to help my loneliness was to then reach out to other people. And that helped me yeah. in a way, take a step back and see that I wasn't just the only one feeling alone. Kind of what we're saying with now that we're on higher ground and we're able to see, see better. There's so much more behind all of our trials and there's so much more hidden underneath, you know, that fear of talking to people or that fear of sitting alone at lunch, right? There's, there's so much behind every person. And I think it's incredible to think of our eternal perspective. Yeah. I think it's very interesting how we could think about Heavenly Father, maybe we feel alone and we feel like he's left us, but from his perspective, he's like, I'm right here. You just can't see me yet. Like um, my father passed away when I was in eighth grade and that was definitely hard. I feel like I was definitely, I was alone. I mean, I had my siblings, but it was, it was, it was hard to see what I was going to receive. And, but now that I, it's been a few years and I've really opened up, I can, I can see the blessings that I've received and I still sometimes feel alone, but if I just pray about it and come closer to God, I feel like um, Heavenly Father is with me and so is my dad. Oh. So, you know, the theme scripture that we have this year, how does that apply? How did you see the Savior strengthen you in that trial? Right after he passed away, my ward, they were just, I, I, didn't, I didn't really fully appreciate them. And so um, just the love that you receive from being in the church and participating in those activities and like people, people definitely get to know you. And through that, they, um, you can gain support. Having that common trial with your siblings and, and your family, do you think that was something that helped unite you guys? Oh, most definitely. Um, like, I feel like there's, there's, a, there's a boundary between siblings sometimes, but with this, we became more vulnerable with each other. We were able to listen and understand and, and just really care for each other. So vulnerability is kind of what connects us, <laughs> right? Yeah. Is that what it sounds sometimes like? Sometimes it does, doesn't it? Talk to me a little bit about why it is that you've decided to be active members of the church. Well, for me, it gives me peace. Because of Christ's atonement, we have the opportunity to repent and become clean again. A wonderful thing, isn't it? Repentance is awesome, and I uh, feel incredible when I feel that. Like, the joy when I repent and I feel clean again. How often should we repent? Daily. Every day. Every day? Yes. <laughs> I thought that repentance was all about judgment day. As long as you get re repented before you reach the bar of God, you're okay. <laughs> Why would you repent every day as long as you know that you're going to be able to do it then? When you have a burden on you, when you uh, make a mistake and you know it was wrong, or even if you don't know it was completely wrong, but you still feel the weight of it, I think that after I repent and feel the Spirit, um, I always just feel way more worthy to go to the temple, to pray to Heavenly Father. and. I think that's just such a beautiful thing. I think that the amazing thing about the atonement is Christ will take all of the things that you are going through and he will carry them for you. And all you have to do is choose to look to him and allow him to help you. And Jesus Christ like understands everything that you've been through. Like during, uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane, he felt like all the pain, all the trials in the world and he understands what we're going through. Well, those were great insights, everyone. Thank you. Ammon, thanks for sharing about your father. That's very tender. When you think about covenants, how have they shaped your perspective? Well, um, sticking to the covenant path and keeping those covenants has definitely been a struggle. So with my father's passing and realizing that I'm the sole priesthood holder in my house, that I had to step up and be worthy to keep, keep my covenants and keep the priesthood in my house for my family and also for myself. I also wanted to share a story about um, a time I found myself in the back of the temple parking lot. Um, I was sitting there and I turned on my music that makes me feel happy and comforted. And I sat there and I prayed and I cried a lot. <laughs> and I knew that I was feeling the Spirit, and I knew that Heavenly Father was speaking me, to me in a way that I couldn't, just, I couldn't just sit in my own home or just anywhere. I, I felt like I had to be at the temple. The temple really is a sacred spot, isn't it? For me, <clears throat> I've been so blessed with the most amazing family ever, but growing up, I think I 
I took them for granted. I didn't realize the full purpose of family within Heavenly Father's plan. And it wasn't until a couple months ago when I was really struggling with friends, I felt so alone, so isolated that no one knew who I was. They maybe saw the outside Bryson, right? And I talked to lots of people, but I didn't feel like people knew me. And I had this spiritual prompting like, Bryson, take advantage of your family. Like be there and say, hey, this is something I'm struggling with. And as soon as I did that, I just said, mom, dad, my brothers, right? This is something I'm going, you know, I'm struggling with. And they were, they were there for me. And it wasn't that they pushed me to, to go to church all those years. Like they were there to be a support, to be a comfort. And that's, that's changed my life to realize that. I think we should all try and be that friend and example and just be loving and kind towards people who maybe don't have that kind of example in their um, home or in their family. And I think that if we're just there for them, whether they're struggling, having questions, anything like that, if we're there for them and helping strengthen them, then we can have a really strong impact. When I was younger, I, was, I had the opportunity to be able to immigrate from Venezuela to the U.S. And as many immigrants might know out in the crowd or around the world, it can be really scary to go to a brand new place. As great as it'll be and all the opportunities that you have, it's really scary to go somewhere where you don't speak the language and you can't communicate with anyone. So we can't be good examples and we can't you know, talk to other people. We crave connection. And overall, I think the most important connection is our families because no matter what happens, we always have them there, no matter where we go. My bishop and his wife have been really incredible examples of loving our ward family as much as they would love their immediate family. And they've told us that before. Um, and it's just so powerful looking around the room at so many people. We're all gathered here together because we love Jesus Christ and we're gathered together around the world for that purpose. And so if your family's maybe not a place of love or you're feeling isolated and alone, remember you have a gospel family. There are so many people with the love of the Savior in common with you, and we all have that together. This yeah. is a pretty big family here tonight, isn't it? You know, I love what you have all testified of because it really is true. You know, there is just a feeling within all of us, we long to belong. You know, each one of us, we all want to be seen, we want to be heard, we want to be loved by our friends and especially our family. But you know what's amazing is there is help with those relationships. As we develop a relationship with our Savior, our ability to connect with others will grow stronger and they will be more meaningful. And so if we really can focus on the Savior, some of those other relationships will be stronger. I, I call it covenant belonging. It's when we connect by covenant with heaven, with family, with our church leaders and the church, and with each other as youth. Covenants are the strongest bond in heaven and on earth. You know, we've missed being together, but now we're gathering in person again. We're strong in Jesus Christ and with each other. Shall we see what happens next on our hiking adventure? So what do you guys think about the new Four Strength of Youth? I think it's really different from the old Four Strength of Youth because it makes it so that we have to take more responsibility for choosing to do what's right because we believe it's right. It's hard to, to not just have yes or no answers, but I think it, it's, stra it's strengthening to know that God wants us to find those truths and to pray about it and to study and to ponder and to ask, you know, yeah. church leaders, to ask parents, to ask friends, right? And to have healthy discussions that have to help cultivate this idea of a personal relationship. It's hard to get it right and it's hard to understand things perfectly, but having an open mind will help you be able to become closer with God and understand what He really means when, he, when we receive revelation. I love how it teaches to base all your decisions on Jesus Christ, how like He is the rock that you need to build your foundation on. When you all read the pamphlet and it talks about 
that this represents, this guide represents a higher and holier way. What does that mean to you? I mean, we were studying the Old Testament and it makes me think of when the law of Moses was changed to a higher, holier way of living to remind you more clearly of, of Christ, like the purpose was Christ. Um, that just reminds me of that, that now our focus isn't necessarily the rules, but the higher and holier way is how can we make decisions that will bring us back to Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ? No matter what, we're gonna go through hard things. No matter what, we're gonna have trials, we're gonna have hardships, we're gonna make bad decisions, we're gonna do things that we regret doing, but I would a thousand times rather have God on my side <laughs> when I'm going through those hardships than when I'm not. And I think it's important to remember that we're given those trials to, to teach us and to learn. And God's not gonna necessarily take away all of our hardships because that's why we're here on earth, right? That's why we're here to grow, to learn, to meet, make connections, meet people. And I don't know, that's just, that's super powerful. My dad always tells me, God's love is perfect. Our ability to sense it is not. And so I think those trials are making us stronger for you know different times and different situations. Well, I love how each one of you have expressed the real need to have the Savior in your life. But what do you do to invite the Spirit into your life? I would just say prayer. I know um, sometimes praying sometimes feels insignificant, like the things you're praying for are not really that meaningful. But I promise you that Heavenly Father doesn't care what you're praying for. He just wants to hear from you. And uh, that's helped me feel the Spirit in so many different ways. I say scriptures like I have a strong testimony that Heavenly Father is trying to communicate uh, through to you Every time when you like open up the scriptures, all you have to do is uh, look for it and really study. Well, I personally love attending seminary. It's just like super powerful and to be able to make that connection, it's like reading the scriptures together in seminary, I feel like it's super powerful. So we're having an amazing day here today and look, we're only part way up the mountain, but, but what a day. Well, thank you for sharing those feelings. Any other thoughts you'd like to share? Yeah, can Emily? I share something? Emily, please. So when the new For the Strength of Youth Guide was announced, I was really hesitant and really nervous for the change because there wasn't clear cut yes or no answers on some things. Um, I like to be a rule, fo rule follower and that was a big adjustment for me. Um, but since reading it over, I have gotten the impression that we have this new guide because the Lord trusts us. And Heavenly Father knows that we can make good, righteous decisions, and he's giving us the opportunity to do so. And I also think it's important that we still counsel with parents and leaders about the questions that we may be facing, and to also consult general conference talks. Um, because there's not clear yes or no answers in the guide, you can find good answers to your questions through the words of the prophets. Talking about like the things that are put in place to help the youth make good choices, I had the amazing opportunity to go to FSY conference this past summer. Um, one of the best experiences of my life. And I remember going into one class and the professor said, if you haven't heard anything that you feel like it was for you, then this is the class that it was. And it just happened to be on repentance. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it can be a topic that can be seen as, you know, a punishment. But after that lesson, it completely changed my view. Um, yeah. I went to school and I have a greenhouse full of plants. And I remember that one of them was missing and I just was panicking over this plant. And my friend turned to me and he's like, how can you know one is missing out of the thousands of plants that there are here? And I turned to him and I'm like, I take care of every single one. I water them, I change their dirt. I'm like, I know which one it is and I need to know where it is. And so I think that's a lot, like the main reason why Heavenly Father put repentance there. So that, that way he could get us back. Speaking of repentance, I had this experience where, like I had said, I was really struggling to feel like I had worth that people knew me and I had said some things and really hurt people that I cared about. And I just remember walking into my bedroom and looking at the mirror and I just started sobbing. I fell to my knees and I said, Heavenly Father, like I am not perfect. So much peace came upon me and I felt we don't have to be perfect. Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ don't expect us to be perfect. They just expect us to be trying our best. And that was so powerful to realize that it doesn't matter what we've done through the atonement of Jesus Christ, through repentance, he looks past what we've done and he just looks at who are we trying to become. 
And I think that's so powerful to me. And I think in addition to that, I mean, I've struggled with that too, not feeling like I'm good enough to be able to repent and feel that. But I think that in addition to knowing that we can still approach God when we're not perfect, knowing that since Jesus Christ did, completed the atonement, he felt all of our temptations, all of our hardships, all of our pain, he knows what it's like to go through everything we go through. And he says, I'm perfect. I know what it's like to move past those things. And I know that you can do it too with my help. And so it's so powerful to know we really can do all things through Christ. We are able to become so much better and we're able to move past anything with him. When I was a little kid, and up until a couple years ago, I've struggled with a speech impediment that really hindered the way I spoke. Hardly anyone understood me. It was so hard. And I drew power from the scriptures about Enoch and Moses, how they also struggled with their speech, and through the Lord, their mouths were open. After years of hard work, prayer, fasting, and help from my parents, I finally overcame my trial. I have a strong testimony that through Christ, our Lord, we can truly do anything. Thank you, Joey. I totally agree. That's why I love this new theme. I love the whole idea of we can do all things through Christ. Um, I know that Heavenly Father is always there wanting us to come to him, and like he's always standing there with open arms. But all it takes is us going to him because he's always there. I, I also know that I've at least had a lot of struggles with being able to feel like I want to go to Christ when I'm going through these hard things. And so I, w what have you guys done to help uh, yourselves be able to want to go to Christ and to be able to do that thing? Well, maybe I can jump in on this. I think the world comes at us very fast and a lot of noise and conflict. And for me, I treasure prayer. The opportunity to be still many times during the day, as many times as I need, is sure a blessing. But I am really grateful that sometimes the Lord doesn't answer my prayers exactly how I want Him to be answered. So have confidence and trust in the Lord that He knows you well. I am so grateful for prayer because it helps me feel the Spirit throughout my day. I, I, I feel that way too, President Gordon. The world comes at us so fast and heavily. Some days it seems like the world and, and the pressures that are around you and that device in your hand almost make your decisions for you. But I'm with Bryson on this. I'd a thousand times rather <laughs> <laughs> go into the day every day with the Savior on my side and with, and, and with a feeling of the Spirit. And so every day before I go outside, and sometimes, sometimes during the day, um, I open my scriptures and spend time there and read until I feel a connection with heaven and feel Heavenly Father's Spirit. I try to read 10 pages every day, but at least long enough, and sometimes it takes more than 10 pages that I feel that connection. And then I like to be on my knees in prayer until I can actually feel Heavenly Father's Spirit in the room with me there. And when I do those things, my days go 100 times better. That, that time in the scriptures and in prayer turn out every day to be the most important time of that day. It, it helps me to know that uh, choices have uh, outcomes and consequences. And when we choose to follow Jesus Christ, in essence, we're trusting his promise that all things shall work together for our good in his time and way. Jesus Christ will help us when we need to change or repent, when we sin or make mistakes, which we all do. Our Savior and His Atonement are our most important trail markers, our greatest source of strength as we make our way through life. That, that's what I've felt. That's what helps me. Shall we watch the last segment of our hiking adventure? See what happens? <laughs> How are you? Doing great. How are you? So nice to see you. It's a beautiful day to be up, isn't it? Hey, I want to show you something. Okay. 
Let's yeah. do it. Right, yeah, come let's on. Do let's it. go up the top. Great. Wow. Isn't there something? So cool. Oh my goodness. You can see everywhere. Beautiful. Isn't that incredible? Well worth the way. <laughs> what does it look like from here as opposed to when we were down below? And how's the perspective different? You can just see way more up here. Like down there, it slowly got like a bigger and bigger perspective, but up here you can just see way more than I thought we would be able to see. That's great. Thank you, Hannah. And as we were coming up the trail, there are some markers that helped us to know which path to take. What are some of the markers that, that you find are important or valuable in your life? One marker I think I'm pretty excited to get to is I'm actually getting my patriarchal blessing in a little bit. And I feel like that's a great marker that can help you guide, guide you through life. I also think another good marker is general conference. And I think we really need to put that um, focus on it more and listen to the talks and actually listen to how they can help guide us. Good. One of the best markers we have is the Spirit, right? That's the way that Jesus Christ and God can speak to us. And knowing how to recognize that and knowing when we are able to feel that and, we're able to re and when we're able to receive personal revelation, I think that that's a great way. And it just helps make life so much easier. Mm, great, thank you. How is the temple, and particularly the fact that we come to the house of the Lord and make covenants with God our Father and with His Son. How is that an important marker in our life? When we recognize that the temple is where we make those covenants, it helps it become a great symbol for us. I think not only the temple has like an amazing symbol, but the peace you feel at the temple is on another level. It's, it's like a piece of heaven on earth, and, and, and there's places to feel that all across the world. And we're continuing, more temples are being built every year and just creating more sanctuaries on earth to feel, to feel the love of heaven, to feel the love of God and Jesus Christ. You're thinking of eternal perspective. You're thinking of perspective that has our Savior at its center. How does that change the way that you make decisions? And surrounding yourself with people that can help you bring you closer to Christ is definitely a plus. I mean, I don't think I would have appreciated this as much without you guys. Yes, I think being able to see this perspective and um, especially like when we were down at the bottom when we had such a smaller view kind of shows us that even sometimes when we're struggling in life we don't understand like why certain things are happening like it, this can remind us that like there's always a bigger picture and there's always going to be a reason for things. That's great. Thank you very much, Deji. Because God loves us so much and knows us so well his perspective for us will always be the best thing for us. That perspective can guide us in a way that no other perspective can. That was an amazing day, climbing that uh, Ensign Peak, that old Pioneer Memorial. Uh, all on all in one day. What a, it was what cold. A beautiful thing. It was really it was cold. a cold day. Now, I don't know if you noticed the surprised look on everybody's face on that last little clip there as the as the group came around the corner and saw Elder Gong ahead. They had met him before the night before and had a wonderful ex exchange with him. But we weren't expecting to find him on the top of the mountain to guide us through that last little step. So it was kind of it was a surprise to everybody, but the biggest surprise when when that surprise resulted in this massive group hug at the top of the mountain. You know, that was my favorite part. It was so wonderful to be there all together and to go together to the top. As you think back on that experience, is there any other thought or feeling you'd like to share? Yeah. On that cold, frigid day, we were going up the mountain and as we were leaving. Elder Gong says, Bryson, I want you to go up that mountain and smile and the clouds will go away. <laughs> and that was super powerful to realize, like we each have our own role to play, right? For some people that might be smiling or just saying hi. For other people that might be having these super deep thoughts and comments, but we each play a role in the kingdom of God and we work together to create, to create glory. And I think that, that was super impactful to me.
Yeah, I totally agree. I felt so loved and cared for on that mountain, and not just by the leaders, but by everybody there. And you guys made me feel so comforted and loved. And I think a lot of the time we put aside the leaders that we have in our lives, and we don't really value what they have to say as much as we really should. But my young women's president has shown me so much love, and that's just set such an, a, a great example of.、Um, Somebody who can lead us and what we should be to somebody else, and、um, I think we should really try to focus on how leaders in our lives can help us and really focus on what they have to say. Yeah, and I think we should help other people be able to feel that value and importance because every single one of us is loved and cared for and valued, and we should all get to know that, and we can help. Other people know how much they are loved by sharing with them and letting them know how much Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ love them. Aiming to love like Jesus Christ is, I think, one of the most incredible things anyone can do. Whether or not you see that in Elder Gong or your own young men's leader, I think it's just super great to have that compassion for one another. Amen. I loved how you said being like Jesus Christ because that's like our purpose here on Earth. That's the eternal perspective. You know, when we went to the top of that hill, we saw so much more than we did on the bottom or even the middle. We saw such a bigger perspective. I recently got my patriarchal blessing, and that showed me、uh, my eternal perspective, and really helped me out with my life. Preparing for this event has been. A big undertaking,、um, but it's also given me a sense of purpose to my scripture study and my prayer.、Um, kind of praying, what do the youth of the world need to hear from the Savior?、Um, and I invite you guys, if to to find purpose in your scripture study and your prayer, and maybe say a prayer of, who can I bless today, or what can I learn about the Savior from these scriptures? And I think it can be really powerful. Something that you can't quite see on the video is Elder Gong was actually standing upward in a hill, and the sun was right behind him, and he had his both of his arms wide open, and that's kind of what resulted in that group hug. We just saw him froze for a second, and then got so excited we just had to go see him. For example, President Lund as well. He visited my FSY conference, and he I remember he gave a devotional, and I have him written on my notes. President Corden, first time I met her, I was actually speaking in front of a little group, and she just happened to be on the third row, and I was so nervous that she would look at me and she mouthed it, "You're okay, you got it." And overall, all of the things that we've been able to learn from them is they're just disciples of Jesus Christ who are doing their best, and they just show Christ-like love. So I wanted to ask, in these callings that you guys have, what have you been able to learn from the youth specifically? That is a great question, because let me just tell you some things I've learned from you. But I also want the world to know, as we've gone around the world to see the youth, they're the same two things. One, you know who you are. You have a, an incredible sense that you are daughters and sons of Heavenly Father. That is powerful, to know who you are and to have your identity so firmly embedded. And the hope to to seek to understand that better, and I've seen that through all of the youth that we visit with, is their knowledge that they know who they are. And then second, it's your purpose. I loved how you all talked about how can we build others, how can we strengthen them, and I've noticed that the youth today are action oriented, and they're going to make a difference in this world and help people know the Savior better than. Any other time or any other dispensation, and I know that I know the Savior better tonight by being with all of you. Yeah, I have exactly that same feeling about them. We get to travel around the country, around the world, and meet with young people, young people just like you, and young people just like you. And、uh, what I've learned, Natalie, is that President Nelson knows whereof he speaks. When he says that this is a chosen generation, a preparatory generation who has come into the world at this time for special purposes, and, and the overwhelming impression I have on days like this is、uh, is how true that is, and what amazing power there is that's penned up here. We don't know what our future looks like. We know it's going to be bright, and we know it's going to be good, and there's going to be a lot of happiness, and the goodness that flows out of 
rooms like this and the living rooms that are watching are going to have a lot to do with the brightness of the future world. You know, Natalie, something I've loved learning about this group and about young men and young women we meet everywhere is how fun and how spiritual you are. You know, there's some people who say you can't be fun and spiritual, you can't be obedient and kind, but I find our young men and our young women everywhere are really fun and they're really kind and they're really obedient and that those things go together. The true happiness comes when we know who we are and we're following on the path that we should follow and that makes us happy. That's something I'm learning and that I love about our youth. Well, this has been a wonderful time together. We certainly thank each of you and thank each of you who are with us here tonight. We're going to invite our concluding testimonies and after that, we'll join our youth choir in singing High on the Mountaintop and Caleb will offer the benediction. President Corden, President Lund, would you like to you share first? Well, this year's theme is just simply 10 words long. But notice something. While the first five words are aspirational, I can do all things, it truly is those last five words that will bring power, purpose, and peace in our lives through Christ, which strengtheneth me. It's only when we combine our effort with the Lord's strength that we will discover the ability to move forward in all things, in whatsoever challenge or success, big or small, you will encounter. So our scripture, Philippians 4.13, will you go home and mark it, memorize it, and make it part of you? Now tonight, before you go to bed, Will you just take a moment and ponder, what is a one thing you can do or stop doing that will draw you closer to the Savior? Now, just don't think about it, but I want you to actually write it down and post it somewhere. This year, we want to hear about the, all the things you do and feel as the Savior strengthens you. So as you serve with Christ-like love, as your testimony is strengthened, as you overcome trials with the help of the Lord, share your stories with us by using this hashtag, hashtag, all things through Christ. My dear friends, the more you seek Him, the more you will see Him and the many spiritual markers that surround you. We love you. I love you. But more importantly, your Heavenly Father and your Savior loves you. I leave my witness that Jesus Christ is our Savior and our Redeemer, and He lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, President Corden, for that sweet testimony, and thank you all for joining us here. And uh, so that we could come together and think about making decisions that are worthy of our times, worthy of our stations, and, and worthy of our discipleship. So let's go from here to follow him with all of our hearts, mights, mind, and strength. We've loved being with you here tonight. But before you go, can I give you a heads up on something really great that's coming up uh, this, coming, this, this year? Our next youth event will be a music and arts festival happening this August. We want you to be part of it. You can participate by sharing your original works of music, poetry, art, or anything else that illustrates how Jesus Christ has been your strength. You can submit online at youth.churchofjesuschrist.org and on social media using the hashtag all things through Christ. Now I share with you my personal witness that because he loves us, because he loves us so much, we can do all things through Christ. And so let's love him in return. 
by following him and by following his spiritual trail markers, which he places along our way. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Thank you. We've loved being with you because we can feel your love of the Lord and his love of you. Thank you again for letting us be part of this journey together. And thank you each here in the conference center and across the world for being part of this spiritual journey. We're gathered here as a group, but we're also gathered here one by one, including those in this congregation or my grandson and his deacon's quorum. I'd like to speak to them and to each of you as though we were speaking one by one. Wherever you are, whatever your joys or your concerns, would you please remember that Heavenly Father gives us spiritual trail markers to manifest his love and to guide our path. Please look with eyes to see. As we've talked about tonight, you'll find spiritual trail markers in many places, friends and families, quorums and classes, bishops and other leaders, patriarchal blessings, scriptures, activities and service, the holy house of the Lord, and especially the promptings of the Holy Ghost that draw us to our Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you for listening to each other, for reaching out and inviting so everyone can be included and belong. Thank you for living the gospel and keeping the commandments, for being fun and spiritual, obedient and kind, for following Jesus Christ as his valiant disciple, even when sometimes it's not easy. Thank you for being the strength of youth, for demonstrating, as Jesus said, his truth shall make us free, truly free, and truly happy. Now, sometimes we feel inadequate, not good enough, perhaps even unworthy. Recently, I met a young man who told me, Elder Gong, if you knew what I had done, you wouldn't talk to me. You wouldn't even shake my hand. I gave him a big hug. He was surprised and said he wasn't worthy to be at church. I said, there's always a place for you in the Lord's church. There's always room for you in his inn. Dear young friends, God lives. He always loves you. Jesus Christ is our Savior and Redeemer. Because of his atonement, there is no point of no return. His light is always on. His arms are always open to welcome and embrace us. We are led today by God's living prophet, President Russell M. Nelson, and our First Presidency, and all the leaders in God's restored Church, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. The Book of Mormon, the ordinances and covenants of the House of the Lord, the testimonies of the prophets and apostles, and especially the Holy Ghost. These precious spiritual trail markers point us to our Savior Jesus Christ, whose witness I am and of whom I solemnly testify. In the sacred and holy name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. Top, a banner is unfurled. Ye nations, now look up, it waves to all the 
God remembers still His promise made of old That He on Zion's hill Truth's standard would unfold Her light should there attract Our dear Heavenly Father, we're grateful that we could be here tonight and gather as a saint. We're grateful for Jesus Christ and his atonement and all that he has done for us. We're grateful for the ability to repent each and every day. We're grateful for the strength that Jesus Christ provides so that we can get through our trials and our weaknesses. We are very grateful for our prophet, President Nelson, and all he does for us. We ask a special blessing upon all the missionaries that they'll be protected and guided. Please bless us as we go home tonight that we will be um, protected and that we will be able to make it to our destination safely. And we say this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. <laughs>